Only. Okay, the connection is started. We can start. Yeah, it's good. You can see my slide. Yes, I can see your slides now. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. It's good. So, all right. Maybe the only. Uh, but you have not started recording yet, right, Manuela? We are not live yet, right? Yes, we have started, Dr. Shabir. Yeah. You can start. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, good evening from Singapore. Uh, it's my honor as the moderator of this session to introduce uh, our speaker. Uh, this is the 13th uh, If So General Club, and the General Club is from an article picked uh, from Tehran, uh, written by Dr. Ali and uh, Dr. Khalaj here. This is from the Tehran Obesity uh, Treatment Study Group. Um, a, a very ambiguous place where you wouldn't think a lot of bariatric work would come from, but I'm very honored to host this case series, Dr. Khalaj. Uh, you guys can type in your questions when you join in on the questions section here, and uh, we will take those questions. And as a reminder, this session is being recorded, and the purpose of recording here is that people may not be able to attend the seminar directly, or this webinar directly, and they may go back and listen to this webinar. The title of today's presentation by Dr. Fallage uh, is Protein Calorie Malnutrition uh, Requiring Revisional Surgery After uh, Mini Gastric Bypass, One Anastomosis gast Gastric Bypass, Tehran Obesity uh, Treatment Study. So, Dr. Khalaj uh, and Dr. Ali, uh, the stage is over to you. Uh, please, uh, over to you for your presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, hello, everybody along the globe. And uh, I'm waiting uh, to introduce uh, my colleague, Dr. Motamed. And we want to first, we want to speak a little about the, uh, this uh, study. Can you see uh, my uh, presentation now? Dr. Khalaj, we can see your presentation very well. You may proceed. Yes. Why I cannot see my presentation? I don't know where. Uh, Dr. Khalaj, you may want to just see it on your laptop. Yeah, yeah. Please, uh, just a moment. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Great. We have can your you presentation. Can you see my presentation? Yeah, we thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, my topic is protein calorie malnutrition requiring revisional surgery after mini gastric bypass, Tehran Obesity Treatment Center. And uh, we have four factors for surgeon that influence one bariatric procedure instead of another one. What is this factor? First, weight loss result. Second, resolution of comorbidity. Third, surgical factor and technique. And third, complications. And uh, why I prefer, my group prefer one anastomosis gastric bypass instead of uh, mini gastric bypass instead of the Y gastric bypass. First things weight loss results. I bring five study, five very good study about this topic. As you see in this study, all of them new and uh, one systematic review, one meta-analysis and three randomized uh, clinical trial. In the first one, about the weight loss result, in the first one, you see that in the five year, in the OAGB group, 97% they had 97% excess weight loss uh, in run, in OAGB and 77 in run one. In the second study, study two year uh, in OAGB group they had 87% excess uh, weight loss uh, and in the run by 85 is statistically significant. And in the third one, in three years, after three years, 
uh, 6% excess weight loss in OHV and 61 in uh, sleeve gastrectomy. They uh, compare a sleeve and uh, OHV. And uh, in the systematic review of the uh, Parmar and Mohavar that they uh, bring to 12,000 patients in this study, they, uh, the, the result is 76% excess weight loss in all of these patients. It's a very good result about the weight loss in OHV group. In all the study, and in, also in the last one, the meta-analysis, the three-year, 12,000 patients, uh, they had 7.3% uh, more excess weight loss in OHV group. As you see in the old study, weight loss in the OHV is more than RAMY and more than sleep. But about resolution of comorbidity, in resolution of comorbidity, in this study, you see that uh, in the five study, you see that the, for diabetic resolution, 95% in the OHV, 86% in the uh, Ruan Y group, and hypertension 83 versus 73. In Robert study, uh, there is a good, very good result in OHV, 60% complete resolution in this stop, 38% complete re resolution in the run by near two times in OHEB. And there is another study because we bring a new study and meta-analysis and RCT. There is another study that in the 10-year resolution of diabetes after OHEB is much more than run by and sleep. And uh, as you see in another study uh, in uh, Shiva Kumar study, 89% versus 81% diabetes resolution and hypertension resolution, 74 uh, in 70 versus 72. As you see, in all of this study, resolution of comorbidity and weight loss result in the OHB MGB group is better. And uh, the superiority of the OHB in uh, resolution of in the resolution of comorbidity and in the weight loss is uh, clear. But about uh, surgical factor and technique, the third one. I think this should be fourth one, but uh, we bring here the third one. In the surgical factor and technique, you know that. OHB has shorter operating time, shorter hospital stay, single anastomosis, tension-free anastomosis, has less intraoperative bleeding. In the old study, the, this factor is uh, clear. But about complication, early complication and late complication. In the early complication, uh, when we compare bleeding, leakage, bowel obstruction, intra-abdominal abscess, and anastomosis stenosis, the, when you compare between RAM Y and uh, sleep or RAM Y and uh, OAGB, uh, this is comparable to each other. Or in the OAGB is lower. Early complication in the OAGB is lower or comparable to another, uh, according to this study and on a, another study. For late complication, what about late complication? In the late complication, about GI reflux, weight regain, uh, it's comparable or in OHB weight uh, regain and GI reflux is lower. Rate of hernia clearly is lower in OHB than run by marginal ulceration is comparable, mortality is comparable. And, uh, but we have one major concern A major concern of post-operative course in OAGB, MGB is protein calorie malnutrition. The only things that we have a problem in the OAGB, uh, MGB is protein calorie malnutrition. As introduction, I should say that protein calorie malnutrition after gastric bypass is a major area of debate. And in some study, OAGB, uh, operation is a malabsorptive, uh, some malabsorptive effect, uh, much more than Rwanda gas. 
products and incidence of malnutrition after OAGP is greater than uh, Rohanvoy and Estil gastrectomy in majority of uh, publication. Uh, our study, method of our study, Tehran Obesity Treatment Study. My center is Tehran Obesity Treatment Center, and our study is Tehran Obesity Treatment Study, TOTS. We did 189 patients between March 2014 to February 2016. With uh, 200 centimeter BP limb, fixed BP limb, we did 189 patients. And after operation, we follow the patient, nine of them, 4.7% uh, of them, readmitted with protein calorie malnutrition, hypoalbuminemia. And uh, with conservative treatment, two of them improved. But we uh, did revisional surgery for seven patients, near 3.7% of our cases we did revision or surgery. Uh, as you see, our uh, patients from one to seven age, uh, all, all of them were, uh, were female and common channel at revision was uh, uh, 300, 350, and in one of them, 108. Uh, time of revision, average 19 months after operation, from 10 months to 29 months. Uh, BMI in the time of operation, 44, and BMI at revision was 22. Uh, and uh, excess weight loss, 109 percent at time of revision. Albumin, most of them uh, have decreased albumin, as you see, less than 30 in all, all of them, uh, except one. And we have uh, in all of these patients hypoalbuminemia. ASC and ALT, no. Uh, important things. PT in one of them, uh, it's uh, a little, two of them, it's a little increase. And uh, hemoglobin, the second thing is that in all of patients, we decrease the hemoglobin. Uh, as you see, 10, 8, 10, 0. 0.5, 10, 8, 8, 7.7. Uh, 7. And platelet, in one of my patients in the revision time, we had high uh, decrease of platelet. And uh, on that time, unfortunately, this, ca this uh, case uh, expired. And we thought on that time that this uh, patient had another uh, uh, hematologic problem. And we did uh, bone marrow and uh, unfortunately, Operation revisional surgery uh, postponed, and we uh, lost this patient. But for another micro element, we don't have any uh, major problem. Uh, OHP with a fixed BP length of 200 centimeters was well associated with persistent protein calorie malnutrition despite high protein supplementation in seven out of 189 patients of us. 3.7 percent we had revision and uh, patient number one to five improved after revision these patients five of them improved uh, two months after revision all of patients uh, was good till now and patient number six patient number six developed severe NASH biopsy uh, we did biopsy uh, in the revision, severe NASH, but she also improved with supportive measure a little later. And unfortunately, patient number seven developed profound liver dysfunction after revision and leading to this. And common channel of this patient was 108 centimeters. Whole uh, intestinal length was 
3 meter and 8 centimeter. Uh, as uh, I, I should say about the discussion, total intestinal length, according to Takino paper, is between 3 to 10 meter. A fixed BP limb of 200 centimeter would have a different result in each patient, depending on the total intestinal length, according to this paper. And what is the solution? If OAGP, MGP surgeon find a solution for this problem, for protein calorie malnutrition problem, if they find a very good solution for this, I think in the future, MGB, OAGB will uh, be the, one of the best operation in the bariatric field. What is the solution? We can choose one of these three type of solution. One, a more conservative BP of 150 or 160 centimeter. We choose this one in our center and they will pub publish our result in near future. Second, tailored approach according to BMI. And uh, third, bypassing a percentage of the small intestine. And instead of a fixed length, we should choose one of these uh, uh, way. About fixed but more conservative detail in uh, Ahuja, a study, a very good study, comparison of BP limb of 100, he uh, compared BP limb of uh, divided patient to uh, 150, 180, and 250 centimeter. And uh, result of this paper is minimal nutritional complications with 150 centimeter BP limb. And similar weight result and comorbidity resolution. But there, there isn't uh, sufficient uh, um, evidence about uh, this uh, topic. I think in the future, researcher uh, should uh, study and you should uh, do uh, R, some RCT to compare this method. If we find this method, this method is a uh, result of uh, fixed but very conservative BPL was good, in the future, I think uh, we can do this simple and very good operation with low protein calorie malnutrition rate. And uh, about tailored approach according to BMI, there is some paper about this in the literature, about the uh, tailor, a fixed 20, uh, five centimeter BP mean no more benefit in the super obese than 180 in Ahuja study. And uh, there is another study, very good study, Shaw uh, in Norway, I think, a study uh, about the Ruanvi. And in this study, he divided patient in three group and in the Ruanvi bot, not, not in the, uh, in the uh, OAGB. He divided patient between three, three group and a fixed two uh, hundred centimeter BP limb and a fixed sixty centimeter BP limb. The super obese patient, and he concluded that better weight loss and resolution of comorbidity higher in the two hundred centimeter group and higher mineral deficiency five point nine percent versus. 0.6% in uh, 200 centimeter group and no difference in hypoalbuminemia. But uh, we cannot compare uh, this study because this study is the run by And about <clears throat> bypassing a percentage, third solution, bypassing a percentage of intestine uh, instead of fixed length, comparison of bypassing 40% of uh, small bowel uh, limb to a 200 centimeter BP. In this study, a coma E divided patient and between 200 centimeter fixed and 40% uh, of uh, total 
body length. Similar weight result in this study, similar weight loss result and less malnutrition with 40. This is the preliminary result of this study. And he said that in the future they will uh, 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 tell about the future of this study, but in the first year they find that uh, they had similar weight loss result and less malnutrition when they choose 40 percent, 40 percent of the small uh, bowel limb. And but there is some problem about this type associated risk with uh, this type of measurement is bowel perforation. I saw expert surgeon that during the uh, measurement of small intestine, they had perforation. And in the literature also, there is some paper about this, but uh, I, I think we should uh, have another study about the, how much perforation, how much injury. In the, in the hand of uh, experienced surgeon, maybe perforation is low, but I think we should learn this operation to the young surgeon and I think the bowel perforation is the, and uh, neighboring organ injury may be a big problem. And also prolongation of the operating time. The limitation of this uh, uh, type of solution. And about take home message, OHGB generally very safe and effective. And we need more research needed to determine the ideal BPL. And why about this? Why in our paper and our uh, patient, why we had higher revision rates, 3.7% 3, 3 versus 0.35% in another study? I don't know. We have some suggestion about this. In insurance coverage issue in Iran may be low for repeated hospitalization and I think lack of patient support system and role of patient's family is very important. I remember in this patient, the, their family don't agree with the uh, operation of this patient and maybe this uh, problem in other culture and other community maybe uh, the reason of the why we have this uh, high revision rate. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, we have another slide. This is the, our uh, uh, paper that we published uh, by biopsy program progressing fatty liver disease and one, mortality, one of our mortality, we published it in a paper and another uh, paper. And this is the university and also my center. And thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Khalaj. Uh, that was indeed a great presentation and we learned a lot and we will have more questions. Please keep those questions coming. Uh, you have uh, to the attendees who are attending this, we've got these questions section uh, on the dashboard that you see, you can type your questions and I will address them to Dr. Khalaj uh, and Dr. Ali. Uh, Ali, do you have any further comments? Dr. Khalaj has done a great job. Do you have any comments, uh, further comments to share with us before we move on to the question section? Mm, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I also want to say hi to everyone and thank you for having me here. Uh, first, I would like to thank you and if so for giving this study a voice and uh, providing an opportunity to share our results. Uh, I'm very proud to say that this center and the data coming out of this database uh, was among, among the first ones that brought uh, a lot of attention to this uh, complication after the surgery. And uh, we have presented these results in many conferences and also in the upcoming conference at if so in Madrid, we're gonna share more about it and the comparison of different lens, as Dr. Khalash has mentioned. I think all the topics are covered and that was indeed a great presentation. And uh, uh, this, is, this is now a good chance to discuss about what causes it and uh, how we can prevent it. 
So, Dr. Khaled and Ali, I have a question for you guys. Um, there is a question about what what is actually protein calorie malnutrition? What does it mean to you? How do you quantify? Uh, how do you assess patients for protein calorie malnutrition here? Ali? Uh, yeah, take... absolutely. Uh, yeah, so uh, to the best of my understanding, we are dealing with the situation that we have uh, the absorptive area of the intestine is decreased to the limit that we, ha we have problems uh, with the intake of calories and enough proteins for the body. And this puts a lot of pressure on the liver because liver is the main organ dealing with uh, the protein synthesis and uh, maintaining the metabolism in the body. So uh, when the liver cannot handle this uh, significantly decreased intake, uh, it starts to malfunction and we see liver dysfunction and uh, the protein levels in the blood drop. We see many clinical signs associated with it, such as edema, fatigue, and also other signs of malnutrition may add to this picture, such as anemia, thrombocytopenia, and other problems. Lovely. Thank you, Ali. Dr. Khalaj, uh, there is a question that comes up. Uh, you've stressed upon the importance of the biliopancreatic limb in your study quite a fair bit, um, and uh, referred to it as a determinant of the elementary limb. Uh, but on your presentation, I see that you have also stressed a lot about total limb length. Uh, from the take home messages that you have put here uh, and uh, seeing that your results are very different from those that you have seen in other papers, uh, what is your own feeling after doing this? Because I see that you've done about 189 odd cases in two years, so your volume is pretty high. So can you enlighten us a bit? Now, in, uh, in our uh, series, only in one of them, only in uh, one of them, the expired one, the limb, uh, the common channel, or, or uh, total uh, limb was 308, and we bypassed 200 of uh, them and remain only 108. But in another case, in other cases, in other cases, all of them, we had more than 300 centimeter uh, common channel, and uh, we bypassed only 200 of them. I think the most important things, according to my paper, because we don't uh, calculate uh, the, the total uh, length of intestine, but in another uh, paper that I uh, read in these uh, days, uh, the total limb is not important. Only the bypass limb is important. Because in another paper, when they did 150, the resolution of comorbidity, weight loss, and everything is good. And malnutrition also is good. They, they didn't also calculate the whole length of the small intestine. But Dr. Khalaj, I can come back on that point and say that uh, you have compared most bypass RU and Y gastric bypass studies to mini gastric bypass. No, only, if you only told, one. In yeah. the, only in one of them, I told in the, my only in Shah study uh, we compared because uh, we don't have enough evidence, enough paper about this. I, yeah, uh, but, br I, brought, I brought that for comparing because uh, there isn't uh, enough head to head. Uh, a study because we we should uh, put a study RCT head to head 150 and 200 fixed one. We don't have enough study about this because of this I bring the run Y result. Yeah, but did and you see Ruan Y study? The Ruan Y study. Uh, the Ruan Y is typically um, a restrictive, I mean, not restrictive, but it tends not to work with malabsorption, whereas uh, one anastomosis bypass, mini bypasses are all yes, very- Yes, I agree, I agree, we cannot. I agree so we, with you, we cannot compare the result of Ruan Y to OAGB, and I told in the my presentation. 
So, uh, Dr. Khalaj, I have another question. I, I see and I read your paper with very interest, and I saw that um, the vitamin replacement doses that you have put up uh, for replacement, uh, when you compare these with international standards, uh, although your results don't seem to show in the midterm some nutritional deficiencies, uh, but they are not comparable with international recommendations like the ASMBS and the other ones. Um, uh, in terms of the micrograms or the micrograms, whichever the values of replacement are. What are your comments on that? <clears throat> uh, my nutritionist on that time uh, prescribed this, uh, as we uh, wrote in our paper, one pharmaton, and uh, because uh, we wrote this in the nutritionist book, and uh, we, we prescribed all of this for all patients. But only in this patient we had the problem. So, what what do you in terms of protein, uh, calorie malnutrition in in terms of proteins? What is your general advice to your patients who have uh, mini gastric bypass here? I, I I don't see a guideline here that I see in your paper. Now, uh, now we uh, after these uh, cases we have a strict uh, uh, strategy about our patients. All of our patients after uh, 10 days of operation came and my nutritionist see the patient and after that we uh, at uh, one month after operation, three, six and one year after that my nutritionist see the patient and be advised and also family support. support. And uh, we don't operation. In my opinion, uh, I think the major problem for this patient is lacking family support. I remember this patient, all of this, because we uh, saw this patient, patient with very good family support, and uh, patient that come regularly, their visit they don't have much more problem. Okay, I have a question from the audience, um, and it is from uh, Maria, and she says, uh, have you found in your patients bacterial overgrowth related to malnutrition in this group? Have you studied whether no, there is bacterial overgrowth or not? No, we don't have any, uh, we, we didn't study this. Yeah. Okay. Do you do you use any pancreatic supplements like aplazyme and Zplex, uh, lipases uh, or proteases? Any of this? No, no, no need. No. Thank you, um, uh, Dr. Khalaj. Uh, let's go on to the technique of your paper. I read again in your paper you've been using a 36 French bougie. Uh, pardon my concept of um, uh, of this bypasses. Most people would say make a wide, nice, long pouch, but I see that you're almost yeah. leaving the pouch. Uh, can I say that this is actually yeah. a more like a distal gastric bypass with a long pouch rather than a proper pouch? Um, open to you. College. Yeah, uh, my technique, uh, I put, uh, I, I perform my uh, pouch like a sleep, exactly like a sleep. Uh, and uh, I think, my personal view, I think in my mind, that if you create a very long and very narrow pouch, the reflux may be uh, low. In my opinion, we, we should search. But I saw a lot of surgeons that they create very big pouch, and I think uh, very big pouch creates much more marginal oscillation. I didn't study about this. My technique is like uh, this that I uh, brought in the paper. What is your opinion? My opinion is if it's a uh, narrow and long pouch, you probably have a high pressure system uh, and uh, it will basically yeah. result in two things. It may increase reflux. And the second is maybe the patient can't eat as much as the patient could eat in other wider pouches. So 
I, I, I'm just questioning because 4.7% uh, malnutrition, protein malnutrition, uh, it may impede the way the patient is eating. And on the other hand, we have a very long bypass segment, uh, which may be so uh, creating that nice pouch, which is wide, which allows the patient to eat sufficiently, even probably proteins may make a difference here. So that's why I raised that question. Yeah, this is a, it, it will be in the future because we don't change our policy about the creating the pouch. And what we only we change our policy from 200 centimeter to 160. And in these days, after, after this operation, we didn't have uh, more, uh, till now, more revision and more complication. I think in the future, in the next year, we will publish our results comparing between 160 and 200 and a strict and a strict uh, follow up and uh, on that time i can uh, tell uh, uh, i can answer your question thank you um Dr. Khalaj, uh, just another question. Uh, when i read your paper i note that you have done five gastrogastrostomies and then you mentioned the other yeah. two Converted to normal anatomy, so I was kind of confused. Normal exactly. anatomy. So are all the seven patients were brought back to normal anatomy. No, in seven, in, in five of them, only this is my, now our policy. When you create gastrogastrostomy, because you create another like a fistula, you know in the gastric bypass when you have fistula weight regain and everything is come back but uh, we did the gastrogastrostomy and um, malnutrition was uh, resolved after this operation but normal anatomy you cut the pouch and create jejunal jejunostomy and uh, you 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 create normal completely normal anatomy oh to, so for to your gastrogastrostomy to take only, yeah, so only a very big, very big fistula between the remnant and your pouch. And the gastrojejunostomy is inside. And uh, you have uh, the food that can go from fistula and can go from here. And this technique has a little uh, bariatric effect in the future. Because if you if you change to normal anatomy, the most patients they regain weight, and uh, but uh, in uh, gastrogastrostomy, the malnutrition will resolve, and uh, there is now a little uh, uh, bariatric effect. And uh, I, I think gastrogastrostomy is a good option. But we uh, we are following our patients. Uh, in Iran, we did, uh, me and my colleague, uh, Dr. Pazuki, and another uh, surgeon that uh, do a lot of uh, OAGB, they did a lot of uh, gastric me, and their, their result is good. But uh, uh, a little uh, marginal ulcer, and uh, maybe in the future. But I think uh, gastric me is a good option. Okay, uh, for our attendees, please, uh, those questions, keep those questions coming. Uh, thank you very much for those questions that we have posted so far. Um, I just I'd just like to move on a little bit, uh, and I think uh, people have a question. So even if you look at um, Carbajo's technique, and even if you look at duodenal switch, uh, everybody recommends somewhere a common uh, channel of about 250 to 300 centimeters. And I see that in your series of complication, all the patients actually have much less than that where uh, your common channels are actually quite short. Um, so, I mean, I, I kind of uh, find it hard to believe, and I do agree that there would be complications along the way when we measure bowel, uh, but I would find it very hard as a surgeon uh, to convince my patient that I would just blindly bypass 100 
50 centimeters or 200 centimeters or this percentage uh, without having to measure the entire bowel length. So I would still be very apprehensive of that. Uh, so what, what do you think about these comparisons of duodenal switch and even Carbajo's common channel? Yeah, uh, I told, uh, I think also the measurement of all uh, intestinal length is a very good uh, way and you can choose a percentage of this and but there is a big problem first you, it's uh, increase the length of operation first and second the bubble injury especially in the super obese patient if you have a patient with bmi more than 60 and you want to ask your fellow to measure all intestine there is a very big problem. I don't know. I, I am an advanced laparoscopic surgeon and also I uh, measure, uh, I can measure the uh, whole uh, intestine uh, very well. But I think measurement, if we uh, have good result with 160 or 150, you know that Dr. Shualie has a very good paper and very good result with 150 centimeter bypass. And if we have, we have very good result and a little bit weight regain, no problem. You should find a simple operation that can teach to your fellow because the, the obesity is a very big problem. And in my opinion is that if we, if we don't calculate whole length, it's better. In my, in the, maybe in the future you uh, have a paper that after uh, uh, percentage, after choosing the percentage of small intestine, it, it may be better. I don't know in the future. But now in the current literature and current evidence, don't support the measurement of the whole length. We can do a survey in the surgeon all of the group and ask them about the measurement of the measurement of the whole uh, intestine. I think majority of them tell that the measurement of whole intestine, especially in the super obese patient, is very difficult. In my, it is my opinion. But but do you think that the bowel length uh, between a super super obese super obese and uh, obese patients uh, would vary very widely? Are we trying to suggest that super obese patients or super super obese patients have extra lengths of uh, bowels? Um, I've not come across a study that looked at measuring bowel length in just obese individuals, super, super obese and super obese patients. Uh, are you aware of any such study? I don't know, we can, we can study. We, we can study in here and we put a, a design a study and, uh, but I, I don't know now Carvajo uh, will, uh, ask this question and tell me Parvajo is my professor and I like him very well and he phoned me about the, about this paper and he made me and I think if uh, the measurement is good but I don't, I don't think that in the super obese patient the uh, length of a small intestine is much more than uh, lower BMI do you think do you think I, I, I or, think it is. Yeah, I a, think this is. A, I think it's just a variation. Is there any paper uh, about this? No, not that I've read. Uh, I, I, I can't. Uh, for my limited no, reading. There no, there isn't. No, uh, no, there isn't any evidence that in the super obese patient have the bigger, bigger small intestine. And uh, uh, no, I think maybe uh, Mr. Uh, Muhammad Ali intestine uh, bigger than me as uh, because he is very fit and I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I can so add a little I'm doubt to this. Dr. Maybe. Yeah, Dr. Khalaj, uh, I know of a study where they looked at the association of intestinal length and uh, whether there is a factor that yeah. can uh, that can tell 
there there was an association between the BMI and intestinal length, but that was not a strong one. But the only consistent uh, factor yeah. associated with the length was the height of the patient. So oh, it suggested that taller yeah. patients have yes, longer totally. intestinal length. Okay, Just so there's a yeah. the pyramid. Yeah, this is a study about this. Yes. Uh, Dr. Khalaj, um, uh, one, uh, we, we're coming towards the end of uh, the presentation very soon, so we just want to wrap and go on. Um, uh, your short-term data, I would call this uh, intermediate or short-term data, about two to three years of follow-up to 4.7% malnutrition. Do you think if you really study long-term five and 10 years data, uh, this risk of uh, this um, incidence or prevalence of malnutrition will go up? Uh, I, I don't think so. I didn't think so because now we follow our patients. 180, we had 189 in that group, and now after two years we follow. And after uh, two years, the problem is in bariatric surgery. You know, after one or two years, the problem will uh, decrease, decrease in the time. And I think in the future we don't have problem with this 189 patient of us because till now after two years of this study from uh, uh, 2014 <coughs> till 2016 now 2019 after three years and we did uh, most of them in 2014 but now we don't have any other complication other revision Till now, I think in the future we don't have uh, in these cases, and I think the problem, uh, most of the problem is uh, start in six months and uh, and uh, in the peak in one year and one and uh, half year, and after that decrease uh, very fast. What is your opinion, Doctor Motani? Yeah, yeah, I think the observation we had was that most of the patients uh, experienced this problem around the first year of after after the operation. So as you as you also mentioned, uh, like looks like there is a, a sort of adaptation of the patient with the operation and the body can handle it from there on. But because the weight loss is maximal within the first year maybe that that's where the pressure is on the liver and we can see this function of the organs within that time period but afterwards looks like the patients adapt and uh, like they they can manage uh great yeah. so these um, two years this uh, if I may ask, um, your resuscitation time, I see it's about seven to 10 days of uh, nutritional support to these patients before you're going in for re reoperations. Do you, would you advise the audience to do this for longer, especially learning from the mortality that we have had, uh, making, giving them total parental uh, nutrition for a time? Uh, in, in my opinion, if uh, you, if, uh, surgeon do OAGB and patient uh, come uh, with uh, fatigue, anemia, and uh, hypoalbuminemia. They should start strict nutritional support and admitted patient to a hospital. And uh, after one uh, parenteral nutrition, if the problem resolved, it's good. But if the recur after one uh, admission and one menstrual nutrition supplementation, you should do operation very fast. Our problem for mortality, our mortality was because uh, that patient had uh, decreased uh, platelets. And without on that time that she had Another problem, not only for protein malnutrition. On that time, our experience was not uh, good about this. And uh, the, the problem, we did uh, bone marrow and uh, the hospital, we, we sent her to oncologist. And uh, because of this, we lost time. And also, in, uh, one time, I remember that there uh, was a holiday in 
for one of the operation and and one time the patient didn't accept operation our operation and she discharged herself and i think i think we should do operation you you do bariatric surgery bariatric surgery is very good for the patient but in some percentage of patient we have problem we should we should change our policy we should we should convert oagb is a very good operation because you should, you can convert it easily very easily you can convert it one gastric surgery 20 minutes operation you can uh, do laparoscopy fine Dr. Yes. Khaled, I have a question from Dr. Hadi, uh, and the question is, how do you balance between uh, limb length and the effect that you want? So a longer limb, biliopancreatic limb length versus the benefits of uh, smaller length. How would you balance this in your practice? Some practical tips or guidelines. Uh, I, 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 I uh, don't understand very well your question. How, how okay, so I Dr. balance is between what? Dr. Hadi is asking uh, if you want to make, uh, say, you want to make a limb length, how would you make an appropriate limb length without causing complication and getting the best effect? Uh, about the lung, in my opinion, my opinion, now in our experience because last year we did uh, i think more than uh, 400 cases and uh, in my opinion a fixed 160 centimeter bp limb uh, has a very good weight loss result and resolution of comorbidity and very good uh, option we, we don't estimate the whole length of uh, uh, small intestine uh, Dr. Khalaj, we, we're probably up to the last question, and the last question comes from none other than Dr. Malfobi here, uh, and he's asked, what characteristics uh, did you find common in patients uh, with the protein calorie malnutrition? Uh, what are common characteristics in this patient? Uh, is it like inconsistent follow-up, unable to afford supplements, they can't buy the supplements? Uh, and what would you suggest for vegetarians? Yeah. Uh, hello, Mr. Phoebe. Mr. Phoebe question, yes? Professor yes. Phoebe question. This is the Phoebe question. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Phoebe. Lack of family support. I think if I tell one thing, lack of family support, lack of social support is the most important things and in the vegetarian i think in the vegetarian the problem may be much more than in the non-vegetarian people i uh, because here we don't have vegetarian patient and i think in india and other countries their experience is high but i think if there isn't any uh, family support social support we should leave oagb operation and we should do another operation like a sleep gastrectomy because in a sleep gastrectomy you don't have much more nutritional problem uh, and uh, i think uh, in the whole uh, i should say that if uh, you don't have a very good uh, support maybe some other believe that maybe you you should leave the bariatric surgery but i tell so that what, if you have don't Dr. good support what you should leave the oagp what is family support? What do you mean by family support? Is it the ability to purchase yes. chicken, meat, or what is that family support you're looking for? You yeah. it? First, the family, for example, husband, all of this uh, patient was female. The husband and the family agree with their operation. Uh, a lot of patients came with, by their uh, wish. Their family don't want to operate for them. First, of it. they they should come and uh, physician and surgeon should speak with the family also, not only with the patient. I think family support is the killer. First, understanding of the operation, and they should know about the operation. They should know complication of the obesity. 
a lot of patient, a lot of people don't know that obesity is a bad. Only the patient know, and their family don't know. And I think the family uh, support and family understanding the obesity, obesity complication is very important. Okay, um, I think we are just about time uh, and uh, it was a great uh, meeting indeed. Um, any final wor words from Ali? Uh, and then we will hand over the mic to Dr. Khalid for any final words from his side. Uh, Dr. Ali? Uh, yeah, well, thank you. Uh, I think uh, this was a very uh, productive discussion about this operation, which is very popular gaining more popularity every day and uh, we see a lot of research around it and like playing with the bowel lands and experimenting calculating percentages of it so it's a very thriving and interesting area of research that we're also very interested in uh, i think all the important things are said so i'd just like to thank you and if so and the organizers for making this possible and i, and I look forward to the future journal clubs uh, thank you, Ali, for being with us. Dr. Khalat, you have the final word. You are the author of the patient. What is one message you would want to bring clearly across to the readers of this paper? Uh, I want uh, to tell that heavy up and uh, post up. Operation is the operation technique, and the uh, technique operation is that the last and the minimum things that the surgeons hurry up uh, see the patient uh, speak with patient with the family and also very good work up very good follow-up calling to patient and uh, have a good uh, nutritionist good uh, follow-up team is very important if you have if any surgeon have this team do operation and if not, I, I think you should uh, send the patient to a very uh, good center. Thank you very much. Thank you for choosing our article. And I'm very happy to be in this journal club. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you very much. I would like to close the 13th uh, If So General Club. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Khalaj, Dr. Ali, for being there. It's odd times at your side. Uh, thank you for all the audience who have participated, the attendees for your question. Uh, and I hope this was an educational uh, uh, event that probably we learned a lot from. And we look forward to having you at the 14th Journal Club very soon. Uh, with that, uh, thank you. Uh, good night, good afternoon, and good morning, wherever you are in the world. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.